Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Get Ready for Manufacturing Month. During this session, we will share our knowledge and experience for planning your students' event. And this time, we will include a panel with award-winning best practices and tips for planning and executing a successful industry tour. We will have a Q&A session after, uh, at four because the timing is precise and whoever has a question, please uh, write it in the chat. And remember, it will be after um, the panel session. Let me introduce the panel team. I am Daniela Orozco Co, career, uh, career and technical project manager, and my colleague, Teresa Potter, community engagement manager, who will be sharing with me the presentation. We have Ernie friends also in this uh, session, uh, our executive director and Dr. Marilyn Barger, senior education advisor. I don't, she will be joining us soon. Oh no, she's already there. Uh, okay. Fleet. The Florida Advanced Manufacturing um, Education Center, also known as FLAID, is part of the Florida Mex Network. Our work focuses on manufacturing, workforce education, and training. And our top outreach campaign is to help aspiring students in manufacturing careers. And guess what? The top event that we use is Manufacturing Month and everything that we can do to help inspiring students. Now, I will hand over to Teresa, who will share important information about how to get ready for Manufacturing Month. Teresa? Good afternoon. Uh, Manufacturing Month in Florida will kick off this year on National Manufacturing Day, right, which will be Friday, October 4th, and we will continue to celebrate it throughout the month. FLATE and our statewide network of partners has been helping to promote Manufacturing Month since 2012, when National Manufacturing Day was first established on the first Friday in October. And right from the beginning in 2012, the goal has been to highlight the importance of manufacturing to the nation's economy and draw attention to the many rewarding high skill jobs available in manufacturing fields. And this will help change the perception of careers in manufacturing to reflect its true status as the most advanced high tech industry in the country. And the ultimate goal is to support manufacturers across the country and in Florida to help build a steady pipeline of qualified manufacturing talent to build and support local economies for decades to come. And we have been tracking in-person student tours of manufacturing facilities since the first Manufacturing Day celebration in 2012. And surveys show that it is very impactful to students to see manufacturing facilities in person, to see the jobs that they might end up doing and to talk to employees who are doing those jobs. But there are many other types of Manufacturing Month events. Um, since 2020, another option has been to do virtual tours, uh, live events where you walk students through the facility and then do a live Q&A, but virtually. Uh, manufacturers can also visit schools or individual classrooms or participate in school-wide or district-wide career fairs and expos. And it has become more common to see manufacturing specific expos across the state, uh, coordinated by some of these local partners that we have listed here. Uh, community and state colleges will hold career expos that include manufacturers, but also provide the opportunity to explore two-year technical programs at their colleges. And our panel of experts today will give step-by-step -step details on planning a student tour. So I'll just mention that if you have trouble locating the right local partner for you, that you can always reach out to FLATE and we'll help connect you with a partner in your area. And I also want to mention that it's important to promote your events to get the word out even further than just those who can be at the event. So please register your event with us. You can send the information to events at flate.org and we'll share that information with the Manufacturing Institute, which collects information on manufacturing day and month events all across the country and with other organizations like NIST MEP who track the impact of manufacturing day and month. And also please share pictures of your events on social media during or after the event. And you can use the hashtags listed here, hashtag MFG day 24 exclamation point um, comes to us from manufacturers, Manufacturing Institute. And then we track the Florida events through hashtag FL MFG month 24. And NIST MEP has um, a campaign that's starting this year and they're using the hashtag see yourself in manufacturing. So it's hashtag see yourself in 
MFG. So please use those hashtags if you can share events and then we'll um, share them even further and help get the word out even further. And, um, the last thing I want to mention is that we have a lot of resources available um, through FLATE's Manufacturing Month landing page. It's on our madeinflorida.org website. Uh, the link is here and we'll also put it in the chat. And we provide everything all in one place to make planning for your manufacturing month easier. And I just want to draw your attention to a few specific things that are on that page. We have the FLATE Best Practices Guide for Student Industry Tours. And it includes tips and techniques and checklists to help make the planning simpler. And there's also a link on that landing page to help you find the contact information for the local partner in your area. And in addition to logos, flyers, and posters, under the link for FLATE resources for educators, there are resources to the, make the event more meaningful to students including the company fact sheet, which is also pictured here, which helps students learn more about the company that they will visit before they go so that it has more impact for them. And lastly, also on that page, we'll include links to surveys for post-event feedback, which helps both you and us make sure that we're continuing to plan events that have impact. And now I'll turn it over to Daniele to introduce our panelists. Thank you, Teresa. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our award Winners Best Practice Panel. All of our panelists are Freight Award winners for the most innovative Manufacturing Month Student Events Award for different type of events. So this that's why it's so important this uh, panel that we have is the best of the best. Even though throughout Florida we have excellent people representing and doing wonderful <laughs> events, but this is a key because we have been working together for many years. So let me start with Beth Gallic. Executive Director for the Bay Area Manufacturers Association, BAMA. Beth has been with BAMA for over five and a half years, coordinating between 25 to 30 student tours per year, impacting over 900 students. Michael McCollum, Curriculum Specialist for Industrial, Technology, Agribusiness, and Public Services Education for the Pinellas County Schools. Mike has been teaming up with BAMA for over five years, coordinating educators and students for Manufacturing Month events, impacting over 800 students per year. Last but not least, Ken Patent, Manufacturing Director for Bosch and Lump in Tampa Bay area. Ken has been involved for over three years, coordinating and executing Manufacturing Month tours, opening the doors for over 250 middle and high school students per year. So this is a great uh, panelist that we have here. And let me start, uh, um, the panel now will cover best practices and tips for planning and executing an instructive and fun industry tour. Remember, this is the key for inspiring students. We're going to focus our first topic in planning needed before the event. So here are the questions. Based on your experience, what are the steps for you to follow, who you contact, information needed, uh, budgeting, scheduling, everything that is important for each of you. So let's start with Mike and then we'll continue with Beth and then Ken. Mike, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you guys. Uh, I'm really appreciative of the invite. So I thank Flake for inviting me to this. Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And that's why I've been involved with it for five years now. So I won't ramble on. Um, usually I start thinking about uh, manufacturing month the year prior. So we set our budget sometime in mid March, April. Um, that's when I really uh, start to look into it. Every year I've increased my budget in terms of uh, buses for manufacturers because manufacturing month because it's grown. Every time somebody goes on a trip, another teacher finds out and boom, I'm sending another school off to manufacturing month. So be prepared when that happens because once you send one, it, it the word gets out. Um, and then towards the school year, I have had the pleasure of working uh, with Beth Gaelic um, and we kind of get together and start discussing it prior to school, the school starting um, about, you know, we'll start discussing, you know, how many teachers, how many uh, manufacturers will be involved. Um, then when school gets started is when I start blasting out, hey, it's time to start thinking about manufacturing month. Um, I send out either videos or pictures showing, you know, some of our past trips 
Um, and then basically it's a, it's a sign up sheet who, you know, who wants to be involved. Um, I usually try to cope it, or cap it at one bus per school, but it'll be depending on a, on a school because we might have, you know, different uh, programs at the school. Um, prior to the event, uh, you know, a week to two weeks uh, before the event, I'll reach out to this, the teachers of that school, discuss, you know, setting high standards, high expectations for our students. Um, I'm a former middle school teacher, so I know that you definitely need to start that way early before an event. Um, but on the flip side, it's also if we, if I can get a hold of a, a manufacturer or talk to the manufacturer uh, prior to it, especially if we're sending in the middle school, you know, try to discuss that, you know, it's middle schoolers have very short attention spans. So it's one of those you can't get up and speak for long periods of time. Um, and, but usually most manufacturers are good and the, they get they want to get right to the tour. Um, I try to at least be a part of every tour. Um, so if I can, I at least try to get to there or I'm, I actually will actually be a chaperone. Um, and then, you know, I enjoy uh, being on those tours. And then well, one of the major things I have the teachers do is really try to connect with that manufacturer, um, you know, I always say, hey, you might find that this manufacturer might adopt you. So you want to ha have your students on the best behavior, but also they want to know what you're doing and, you know, having that explanation for them. Um, and uh, what about permits, uh, previous, previous permits with parents, um, signing things for students? Yeah, so we'll do, you know, we do uh, field trip. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm having a blank on that one. Um, uh, permission slips that'll go home prior that we try to have everything locked down because I do use federal funds I use my Perkins funding for these trips we try to have everything locked down at least a month before because of all the signatures I need to go get on that but then you know we're ready to go and uh, usually it's like day after day where I'm heading off to a manufacturer which is is great and one of the things again that I had no real uh, realization of how many manufacturers there were in Pinellas County so to me it's been just eye-opening and it also inspires me to continue doing my job. Excellent thank you Michael. Beth your turn. Good afternoon thank you for including me in the uh in this uh great webinar um lots of good information if there's anything, anybody, uh, any questions that you have uh, anywhere down the line on tours, always feel free to reach out. I'll be happy to walk you through anything. Uh oh. Um, in our, you know, with the, the association, we're always promoting, ring. we're wanting to um, get the word out to students, teachers on the great careers that are available in manufacturing. And a great way to do this are these student tours. Uh, one of our manufacturers, he hosts up to 12 tours a year. He'll do it in October and November. And he's actually hired students uh, that have come out of the tours. And uh, so it's a great opportunity for your uh, supply chain of employees. So with the association, we're always promoting uh, the manufacturing tours. Uh, we'll start about uh, June, July timeframe, and we'll start reaching out to the companies that have done tours in the past. Uh, we create an event page on our Bama website where manufacturers can sign up directly for tours right on the website. So the event page is up and live. If you are a Tampa Bay manufacturer, I've put the link in the chat. It's very simple. Um, we want to we want to get manufacturers thinking about doing the tour. So our event page is very simple. You would just log in, um, put your company name, your email, phone number, and uh, what county you're located in. With the Bay Area Manufacturers Association, we help schedule the tours in Hillsborough, Pasco, and Pinellas counties. So we work with the school districts in all of those areas. And then how many tours you can provide. So you don't have to provide 12 like Southern Manufacturing Technologies, one tour is fantastic. Uh, so you let us know how many tours you would like to provide, how many students you can accommodate. And we really ask that you try to accommodate up to 30 to 40 students as the class size is now around 30 to 40 students. If you cannot take 40 students on one tour, you could think about staggering tours, having different tour guides um, branching off to take the students. 
I know with Bausch and Lom, our membership just toured Bausch and Lom, and they split up into different groups. Or you could have some students um, tour first and uh, do the lunch after. So anything that you can do to try to accommodate that many students would be wonderful. Uh, and then do you have a preference, we ask, on do, would you like middle school students? Like Michael was saying, they might have the shorter attention span. Maybe, you know, that's something that you're interested in. And, in, you know, really, um, maybe the, the, the middle school students would be really excited to find out what you do. Or would you rather have um, the little bit mature, more mature uh, high school students? Do you um, have any touring restrictions? So we will typically tell the students long pants, closed toed shoes, any other restrictions you have, you let us know and we make sure that we accommodate that. Uh, will you provide lunch for the students? So to get them there, they love to eat, they love their pizza party. So if you can provide a pizza lunch for the kids or bring another lunch in, that would be wonderful. If you're in the Tampa Bay area and you're not able to do that, we do collect sponsorship dollars that we can put aside toward um, bringing the lunch in. And uh, we ask what your tour dates are. So what you would do is give us a list of the dates that you're available. And we work with the schools to try to accommodate those dates. So there is a little bit of back and forth. So the more dates you give us, the better. And typically tours will be from 10 in the morning until one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so that's what we do in July. We get you guys all set, signed up for the tours. And then like Mike said, we start working with the school districts uh, early August. We do go to the welcome back events at the schools to talk to the teachers to, again, get them to be excited about um, the students attending these tours. And we just attended those events earlier um, in the month and the teachers are very excited. So um, just creating that, uh, that matchup. Thank you, Beth. That, let's give some time to Ken from the industry perspective. Tell us uh, who to yeah, call, what do you do? Okay, great. So uh, on the planning side, uh, it's actually quite simple. Um, we have a, a, a good working relationship with uh, Beth and her team now. She'll work directly with our human resources director, which is Dora. Uh, Dora will bring uh, the idea of uh, doing you know, tours, uh, which we've done for a few years now, to the our Tampa leadership team. Uh, for our site, usually, you know, somebody will volunteer a site creator. Usually it's me, um, which I love to do. And then I'll verify the, the dates and availability uh, to assure that there's no, you know, no conflicts exist um, with, you know, other things that we already have planned. Um, we're also a secure facility. Uh, so we have security on the property and at all of our doorways uh, because we do manufacture prescription drugs. Uh, so we do have to have that uh, available and we do require a, a list of participants who'll be attending since they're going to walk through uh, the facility. Um, and we do have strict guidelines, as Beth mentioned, for attire. Uh, so Dora usually works, um, you know, with with Beth or, or, or other individuals to make sure uh, that all the kids have uh, the proper attire to walk through our facility. Excellent. Thank you, Kim. Now let's move on to our um, second part of the panel during the vet. So let's focus on what is the challenges you face, expectations. You already mentioned safety, but again, safety, 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 logistics. We're going to start uh, now again with Mike. Well, obviously, if you're dealing with some younger students, you definitely want to pre pre group them in um, groups that, you know, are going to work. Somebody also mentioned in the chat media releases form, and that was a good point. Um, we do we our district has the media releases um, on a, a, a teacher can access that information from their computer. So we always ask the uh, teacher to make sure that those students are identified. Um, we don't not we don't want them not to go on the trip and they're m more than welcome on the trip but we just want the manufacturer or whoever to know that those students um again going back to that expectation setting high expectations and then what like they said uh that's been mentioned before um especially with uh proper uh footwear we have that i've had that problem many times over where we have stressed to students you know we cannot take you if you're wearing your the slides or the non-closed toed shoes, and sure enough, one or two will try to 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 make that happen. And unfortunately, we have to, you know, say, sorry, we cannot take you. We, you know, we stress this enough. Um, so again, setting high those high expectations. Um, I always have those special chosen students too near me 
to kind of keep an eye on them. But I also like also trying to figure out, you know, is this, you know, something that those students might be interested in how we can better do those tours. So while I'm on the tour, I'll be talking with students, you know, what what's what's the great, you know, what's great about this trip or what, you know, you think could be improved on. And I'll have that conversation with uh, Beth and the manufacturer before we leave. So we're, we stay on top of it. Thank you, Mike. Um, so as we can see, it's very important communication. We know that, but it's extremely important that uh, communication between the educators, uh, the CT coordinators, the RMA or whoever you may contact in this case uh, would be BAMA and the industry partner has great communication, have uh, good names and phone numbers to know who to reach when the time comes. And, and going back to what you said earlier, uh, Daniele, is uh, those fact sheets. Those fact sheets come in great and handy for those teachers to get information beforehand so that those students have some questions when they arrive. Because sometimes, you know, getting questions out of students can be a little bit struggle. So if they think about the questions prior to the event. So the, uh, the, the fact sheets are a great resource on the FLATE website. Thank you, Michael. Any way that you can prepare the student ahead, it will enhance mm -hmm. your impact um, during this, the industry tour. Kim, your comments? Okay, oh, yeah. For... Beth. Oh, Beth, yeah, go to Beth, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Beth. <laughs> so for day of event, um, you know, as if you're a manufacturer, uh, try to be a little bit flexible. Sometimes it does take the kids a little bit of time to get on the bus for the bus to get there, you know, with directions or traffic. Um, so, so, you know, just be flexible with the students, um, you know, on coming to the, the tour. And uh, typically, like I said, um, somebody from the RMA will be there. So typically someone from the RMA will be there and there will also be chaperones, parent chaperones, I believe, and, and some uh, teachers that will also be there with the kids. So don't worry, you know, you're not going to be outnumbered. There will be some help um, with the students and they are all very excited to be there. And usually the manufacturers are as excited. I've seen a lot of manufacturers uh, create different um, different things for the kids, you know, building things and contests. Uh, the company will do an overview with the slideshow that makes it really interesting for the kids. So anything, any way that you can er interact with the kids would be great. And I'll t turn it over to Ken. He's the expert on day of. So <laughs> Ken, take it from here. <laughs> yeah. So so obviously some some very uh, uh, critical things. If if you require what we call PPE, personal protective equipment, like we have to put the kids in lab coats, safety glasses, hair nets, beard covers, because we're going into some uh, what we call classified areas. Uh, have have tour guidelines. Good planning. And stay on time. The the usually the bus driver saying we have to leave by this time. You have to stay on that time. So you're you're on their clock, even though they're at your facility. Uh, swag, swag, swag. The kids like stuff. Give them stuff, but give it to them after. <laughs> and give it to them before, because then that's all they're playing with during the whole uh, the conversation. So try to keep it at five to six kids in a tour group. That seems as at work best. If you can, you know, if you have enough tour guides to move those around that way, it can be a little bit more interactive uh, with the kids as they're moving around. Try to do a hands-on activity as Beth mentioned um, for our site. We actually have um, folks in, uh, in our clean rooms that are dressed like astronauts, believe it or not. So we actually pick a student and we try to, we have them try to get, you know, gown up in there. And that usually goes over pretty good. The kids uh, like to watch uh, the kids make clowns of themselves, obviously. So it's a little moment of brevity there. Um, and, and have, have tour types based on the age groups. I, I have different presentations for middle school. Uh, versus high school versus high school seniors. So if we know we're getting a group of seniors and they've made the decision, you know, college isn't for me or secondary education isn't for me, we have a presentation that's really geared for them as they can look into manufacturing as, as their next step. Uh, set expectations for the kids. What do you want them to take away from your business? What do you what do you want them to go sit around the dinner table if kids still do that nowadays and talk about with their parents? You know, what did you learn today? What did you see? What What did you like? Um, in some pet peeves of mine, don't read slides. Kids can read, let them read it, highlight the important facts about your business only. So that way you can move through, walk around the room, make them ask you questions about what they saw, have a little wrap up at the end. 
and, and really get to their level. Know your audience well. If they're middle schoolers that are, you know, 11, 12, 13, or are they, you know, 17, 18 year olds, they're, they're very, very different topics uh, that you can cover for your business. Um, and explain to them that college is not the only option. You know, there's a lot of options. People come to our work all the time. And if they choose to go to college, we'll pay for their tuition. I mean, there's there's good options for them. And lastly, do that wrap up. Give them a chance to ask questions. Um, it, it, it doesn't have to be brief, but make sure, you know, always kind of push that, that issue that, you know, you tell them nobody's leaving until we get at least one question. Um, mm -hmm. That at least kind of, you know, just spurs some conversation within the team. <laughs> And he said swag, so I don't know if you can see this. Maybe not. No, yes, sir. It's our it's manufacturing notes, backpacks that we, we give these out to all the kids that are going on tours in our area. So they get a nice little backpack to take home, and then uh, the manufacturer can fill it with uh, their promo goods. Excellent. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, input and sharing the best practices and things. I hope everyone is taking notes of these are very important tips. These are more than five years of experience and that have been summarized here. And talking about summary, um, Teresa, can we have that beautiful slide? Only one slide for everything that we have talked here in, in 30 minutes. Those are the, the main <laughs> taking points for you to um, remember. Obtain necessary approvals, set a budget, very important, and funding options if you need to. Timing is very important. Um, do your schedule, connect with your local partners, uh, like Teresa mentioned earlier, can be your regional manufacturer association, uh, can be um, your state college, community college. And if you don't know, just uh, email us, contact us, we will guide you through. Identify your key personnel and the roles. Again, very important to know who is who does what from the industry side, what the educators are gonna be, who is gonna be the responsible, and get your phone numbers. During the day, you will find out that you need, hey, why this is not coming on time? Where is this person? And this type of things. There is always last minute things and things can go wrong. You just need to be prepared for that. Set the expectations and guidelines, very important. And now enhance the student experience, prepare the students, like Michael also said, uh, try to get them prior to the tour to learn about the manufacturing processes, what they are gonna be seeing, prepare them with good questions and connect what they are learning in the school with the product, products that they're going to see. Um, anyways, you can read, I can say the slide, I don't need to read more. Now there is time for uh, questions. Any questions from the audience? There's a question in the chat asking if students are allowed to bring their phones on a tour. So it, it, at our site, unfortunately, we we have a lot of proprietary processes, products, and equipment. Uh, we don't allow uh, phones out there, but we do allow them uh, phones uh, in and around the our, our conference room, um, and uh, they can take pictures of uh, you know what we're doing in that area. But uh, we unfortunately don't allow that in in the manufacturing area. But that would be a site site specific issue. What 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 individuals are willing to share? And that's, again, that whole pre-planning, having that discussion with the manufacturer before. Because as a district, we definitely don't allow them to have as phones as much as they used to. So that's already a big no-no. But it's also when those kids can take selfies in front of, say, the Bosch and Alam sign, they don't forget that 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 tour. Yeah. So I don't want to discourage, you know, all phone use not, you know, because they'll use it as a memory keeper. And there is um, uh, actually a great idea with Flay was trying to promote, like make a contest to have some videos, mm -hmm. mini videos that you can post like uh, about the tour, what uh, the skills are necessary, what fun uh, careers they can find over there. And you can do a contest between the students, you know. Danielle, let me add just a few a few tips here, just if we could. So make sure you keep the kids busy and moving. As I like to say, idle hands are the devil's tools. So you keep them moving, keep them engaged, do the do that activity if you can. Make them learn. Make sure they make sure your message is clear to them about manufacturing in the Tampa Bay area. It's very important to our uh, our economic growth, um, and you know that's why we're in it. So sell your company, sell your message, and I, I think the, the very good takeaways uh, and good feedback that you'll get from the participants. We had a tip in the chat from Rob uh, Langens, which is phones could be used for interactive apps like Slido, Minty, and others, and that Q&A can be a fun way to add interaction. 
Excellent. Well, if there is no more questions for our distinguished panel, I would like to thank you, each of you, especially our panelists. Uh, there is a reason why they are being uh, two years in a row selected as a Manufacturing Month Student Events Awards. And I hope you enjoy this uh, webinar and hopefully you're taking a lot of notes. Presentation will be um, send it to you via email. Teresa will be taking care of that as always. Recordings with all the tips and best practices will be available for you soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you.